I'm desperate for people to start defining their hopes and dreams and wants and needs on their terms. You could work all the time and build a trillion dollar empire, or you could be on six softball teams, be in the Jersey Shore, and make 71 or 43 or $39,000 a year. Here's my punchline. If you can deploy self-awareness and know what makes you happy, just stop complaining. You made your bed. I mean, what is, what's gonna happen? Like, people are gonna make fun of you? Like, your mom's gonna say you, you failed? Like, who gives a shit? Go try it, doesn't work, and go. Don't care what other people think, it's the only reason you're scared. Gary Vaynerchuk. You know the name if you're no stranger to entrepreneurship and the internet. He's been associated with many self-made entertainers. Casey Neistat, Jake Paul, TikTok star Charlie D'Amelio, and traditional celebrities like Jessica Alba. Vaynerchuk's success is very apparent and inspiring to many young entrepreneurs. His main mantra is to achieve this by working hard a simple yet effective message. But it's also been largely criticized by opponents as toxic, privileged, and unhealthy. The Vaynerchuk is just one piece in a large puzzle coined by the term hustle culture. He's certainly one of the largest names in this genre people criticize. Because some of the things he tweets, he tweets like kindness is delicious. Come on, what are we doing? He puts out a little too much content. Yeah, but That's it's also like all my loser friends think they're gonna be the CEOs of companies because this guy <laughs> is telling them there's a business inside of everyone and there's not. In this time of uncertainty especially, does Vaynerchuk's message still hold up or does his advice come from a place of privilege? Welcome to Psych IRL, my name is Donna. Now it's undoubtedly a fact the landscape of YouTube has changed because of this global pandemic. For some creators, it's really not noticeable, but for some, it's very apparent. Travel vloggers, for instance, are having a pretty hard time. Whenever a YouTuber steps outside their house, they're immediately called out by their audience. Now, one such genre I want to examine is hustle culture or hustle creators. A lot of these Instagram accounts post kind of basic, inspirational, motivational quotes weirdly over pictures of lions. Very, very often it's lions. The content is usually aimed at aspiring entrepreneurs. These accounts are all about escaping the rat race and these type of people hate nothing more than the thought of working a basic office job. Nine to five, f that. I'm gonna make myself rich, not someone else. Anyway, a lot of the content that I've seen isn't actually about starting your own business or how to run your own business. But still, more importantly, this content is about the mindset, the millionaire mindset, the success mindset. I think it's a very interesting time to be analyzing hustle culture because people from developed nations finally feel what it's like to have certain privileges taken away. And to analyze this culture, we're going to be looking at successful businessman Gary Vaynerchuk. I'm also going to be interviewing someone who has a similar viewpoint as him and someone who has defended Vaynerchuk before. Guys, I am talking to Roberto Blake, who is a creative entrepreneur and YouTube educator. I chose to talk to you today because judging from a lot of your videos, your tweets, things on social media, you say you have very similar viewpoints to work ethic and success as Gary Vaynerchuk. Is that accurate or? I would say that we very much are aligned in the same vein and I've had the pleasure of like knowing Gary for a number of years and being part of the community and actually meeting him in person uh, to get some of that context. I think that one of the big ways that we relate is I think that we had a similar upbringing. I would say that what you need to know about Gary Vaynerchuk is that Gary Vaynerchuk is a serial entrepreneur who I believe um, really has a message that focuses on the idea of accountability and controlling what you, or rather focusing on what you can control and leaving behind what you can't. You know, your, your approach, your uh, motivational tactic is really just to say, work harder, do more. Perhaps Vaynerchuk's background will give us insight into his perspective on this message of hustle. Gary was born in Eastern Belarus in the former USSR. At just three years old, he and his family immigrated to the United States and lived in a studio apartment in Queens, New York with eight other family members. At a young age, he was extremely competitive. Really, honestly, the toughest part for me growing up, actually, now that I think about it, was losing in anything. I used to cry a lot as a kid. Like if I lost in pool or little league. I would argue that from six to 15, it was a very long process of me being able to acknowledge 
that an, another human being was better at something than me. I was a very happy kid, but I hated school. Like on a different planet. I was getting D's and F's. And the world was telling me I was a loser. My, my teachers were telling me a loser. My friend's parents weren't saying to my face that I was a loser, but I could see it in their eye. I think this is a really integral pillar into Vaynerchuk's personality and his hustle message. Despite what seems to be the world at that time telling him he can't do it, he somehow managed to keep the confidence that he'd prove everyone wrong. I'd be bullshitting this camera if I said like I was crippled, but there was not a single night I went to sleep feeling pressure. I just, always knew I could do it. A lot of this, Gary attributes to how he was raised and genetics. Gary doesn't talk much about his college life, but from a number of his interviews, it seems like all that was memorable for him was playing video games with his roommates. His experience there must have led to his opinions about college and how it isn't a necessary step to success. After graduating, he took the responsibility of the day-to-day -day of his father's liquor store. The time he spent gives us a glimpse into why he's so adamant about hard work. In just five years, he grew the business from three to 60 million. At 35, he would hand the business back over to his dad and start something new. There was a point where the business got so big and I was getting the credit. It's almost like he was getting wiped out of history and it was an interesting, difficult time. I feel like I could have done a better job of giving my dad more credit, but I think at some level, I was struggling with, subconsciously without even realizing it that I owned nothing of it and now I'm married and you know, here I am at 30, 31, 32 years old. I'm not paying myself a lot of money at all. What it took for me to get out of that moment was the ability to start over. Today, Vaynerchuk runs his own media company, VaynerMedia, and he motivates a number of aspiring entrepreneurs with daily content on his socials. His core message is work hard, and if you think you do, work harder. What has made Gary Vee popular is the same thing that his opponents criticize him for, the unrealistic expectations of hustle culture. I'm sure you've seen this in the community before. Gary Vee tends to polarize people. Why do you think that is? Well, I think right now we're at a point in society where everybody um, really is suffering in their own way but there's not a lot of sympathy or empathy for people who are successful unless they're a beloved actor or celebrity who happens to pass away, like Robin Williams, for example, or uh, Chester Bennington from Linkin Park or Kate Spade. But we don't grant that same grace to, say, a Jeff Bezos or maybe um, a Elon Musk or, or Bill Gates in the same way. And I think Gary Vaynerchuk is in a very similar position in the sense that um, a lot of people look at his situation as his success and they also look at his aggressive bravado and I think that that style is off-putting and turns them off but what is he supposed to do? Is he supposed to change who he is as a person to make you feel more comfortable? And I have bad news about complaining and crying. Let me tell you something about complaining and crying that's really really gonna hurt for all you complainers out there. Nobody gives a shit. The following people give a shit when you complain. The other losers around you. Your sick, broken parent that secretly wants to hold you down so that you're not more successful than them. And let me remind you one more time. The other fucking losers around you. Though he encourages his viewers to work hard, many argue that this is done at an unrealistic standard. I literally forgot who I was. I felt like I wasn't myself anymore. I forgot what it was like to be me. I forgot the type of personality I had. All because I was doing what Gary Vee encourages, which is work nonstop, put your head down, and just focus on that. Imagine not doing anything fun or going anywhere for the next eight years, including Saturday and Sunday. That's what I did from 22 to 30. Every day I spent 15 hours a day in a liquor store. Other talking points contend that he hasn't taken into consideration factors such as luck that led to his success. Even with such factors taken into consideration, individuals are dealt different hands in the game of life. Most of these entrepreneur things are just people who got really lucky, who are in a really privileged, uh, position in their lives and were able to start a business. And they just think everyone's on the same playing field so they can just be like, yeah, you do it. 
Why don't you do it? The successful YouTubers, the successful podcasters that you've covered and you've interviewed, the far majority of them did everything they did while they were either students or worked a nine to five job. Marquez Brownlee, MKBHD, built his entire YouTube channel at 14 years old from his parents' dining room when he was a kid and he was still a straight A student and an athlete. You don't uh, think just, that that's like, those are anomalies? I think that you can look at every successful artist, musician, athlete, and CEO, and you could scream that they're anomalies all you want, or you can look at the work and the gap between what they do and the fact that they made a choice to be an above average person, Donna. I don't think they were born that way. I think that what is an above average person is an above average person is somebody who literally decides that they're gonna do push-ups every day, Donna. Like most people are not gonna do that, but we are gonna complain about how we look in the mirror. There's no magical anomaly to being a person who is athletically fit. We could all lift weights or do push-ups or do sit-ups and we don't do it. There's an opportunity cost in life and the difference between above average people who get above average results and average everyday people is not that these people had some abundance of time. Everyone has the same 24 hours in the day. So do you think that the, that's the only variable, work harder? And if you're not at where you are right now, you're just not working hard enough? No, I think that's the rhetoric that people take from it mm -hmm. because it's not about working harder, it's about where you're putting that work and it's about the fact that what I learned, which was the real trick for me to entrepreneurship or to freelancing or to anything, was I realized that working harder at a job where I was trading time for money put a ceiling on how much I could ever earn. There's no amount of hard work that I think you can do in the framework of an employee that dramatically changes your life because you've agreed to a salary, you've agreed to an hourly wage, whatever it is, you can be more efficient, you can be more, I did this, I lived it, and it won't necessarily produce a higher income for you. It's not about just working harder. I think that the big message that everyone misses with someone like Gary Vaynerchuk is, and not just Gary Vaynerchuk, Gary Vaynerchuk, Pat Flynn, John Lee Dumas, all the successful thought leaders in entrepreneurship have all said that you should have self-awareness and nobody audits themselves and holds themselves accountable, Donna, to what they can control, what they have to offer, and then how to best put themselves in a way where they're delivering that value, where it gets the most benefit and where it gives the most benefit to the right people or the most people. Because I figured out that if I can actually create value for more people and I decide how much that's worth, I'm gonna control how much money I make. So that's why I started freelancing more and eventually I quit my nine to five job. Then I scaled that into a business. Because Vaynerchuk is such an influential figure in this genre, he frequently receives the critiques for the culture as a whole, even though the culture isn't a representative of him. For example, Vaynerchuk as well as hustle culture highlights the importance of self accountability. Everything's your fault. You wanna really win in life? You wanna get real happy? You know why I'm really happy? Because I think everything's my fault. If I don't like it, I can change. Everything wrong at VaynerMedia, anything that ever happens, any piece of content, anything that ever happens in my life, 100 fucking percent is my fault. And let me tell you what happens with accountability. You get real happy. When you feel that there's no other source controlling your shit, all of a sudden it gets happier. Now, accountability isn't just some self-help buzzword. In personality psychology, it's measured on something called the locus of control. Locus of control is how you perceive how much control you have over any given situation. On one side of the spectrum is internal, and on the other side is external. If you lie more on the internal side, you see situations happening as more your fault, more in your control. If you lie more towards the external side of the spectrum, you see situations happening due to external factors. Luck, chance, karma. The most common example, if you fail a test in school, if you lie towards more the internal, you would say something like, I failed that test because I didn't study hard enough. If you lie more towards the external part, you would say something like, I fail that test because the teacher is just so bad at teaching. Now, individuals that lie more towards the internal locus of control have better academic success, 
do better dealing with stress, and are more satisfied with their jobs. It does make sense if you think about it, if you see things as more in your control, if you are put in a bad situation, you feel like you have the power to get out of that situation. If you feel like a situation is more out of control, you're more likely to stay and dwell in that situation because, hey, why not? You can't do anything about it. I'm just gonna let life Vaynerchuk tailors his message about accountability to whoever he's speaking to. In the clip where Vaynerchuk is more brash, he's speaking to an audience that's more privileged. They've paid hundreds to hear him speak. On their website it says, we'll be joined by CEOs and founders of the world's largest companies, the most promising new startups, influential investors, and leading journalists. He's speaking to and listening to the complaints from this type of crowd. Now watch as Gary gives the same advice to a different type of person. Well, I'm like 14, I can't do shit. I, I just can't fucking do that shit. I have no fucking friends. I, I know it's just fucking forever. Man. I can't take this shit. You know? I get it, but you have to understand there's no alternative. When you're 14, four more years sounds like fucking forever, but you have no choice. You either bounce or you stay. And if you stay, which is more likely, which is fine, you gotta put fucking positivity in your ears. Do you understand? I promise you. You have no other alternatives. Otherwise, you just dwell and you go down a spiral that you don't want to go down. Gary's message is the same, but he's saying it in a different way depending on who he's speaking with. The summary of the message is to take control however you can. No matter the situation you're in, yes, there are a number of things that will be out of your control, but you can either dwell on what could be or take whatever small steps you can into getting what you want. Do you think there is a discrepancy between the whole culture, the whole hustle culture and Gary V? I think that when people say hustle culture, they're conflating a broad base of people with this idea of toxic productivity. And they're not doing an audit of whether how that person operates to see if they are living a lifestyle that actually could constitute toxic productivity and whether they're advocating for toxic productivity. I've never heard Gary say sleep four hours a day, not once. There's a lot of overlap to what Gary Vee says and the culture as a whole, but there's a big difference between the two. Those corny Instagram posts you see can be damaging. Emotions, dude. Boss up. <laughs> dude, I'm gonna be a therapist and just show them that picture every time. Our society and social media, I feel like has supported this kind of thinking or this process forever. The burnout just started building and building and building until I crashed and I crashed very hard. I think I needed like a full day or two to almost go comatose because I couldn't really do anything. And then I picked myself up and I jumped straight back into hustling. I thought, well, that was weird, but I got my rest now, so I'm gonna get back into it. But then what started to happen was I started to get that more and more. So I could push through, I could push through that wall and I could hustle, hustle, hustle. But whereas before I could make it 18 months, suddenly I could only make it six, and then the same thing would happen again. And then before I knew it, I was burning out every three months, and then every month, and then every couple of weeks, and then every week, and suddenly I felt burnt out all the time. Of course, I'm not saying that we can't want to improve or do better or make more money or be successful. I think we can do all of those things. However, that shouldn't be at the cost of everything else in our lives. We shouldn't have to constantly choose between meaningful relationships and our work schedule, or taking the time to decompress when we need it. What's most annoying to me about hustle culture aren't the thought leaders like Gary V, it's the consumers. The consumers who take the message the wrong way. I feel like that sort of stuff inspires and creates a lot of people who are just like faking it in a way. So I feel like that kind of creates people to be like, oh shit, you're right, I gotta work hard. But they don't actually wanna do it. As soon as I started seeing kids who never had an entrepreneurial bone in their body, who never sold a thing in their life, who never cared about any of that stuff, and co were coming out of college and starting businesses, that's when I was like, 24 months ago, that's when I was like, uh-oh, this is starting to get a little awkward. I personally seen bosses who took a page out of hustle culture underpay their employees for their time. 
They'd say things like, you're just not hungry enough. Of course, the turnover rate was high. What I really like about Vaynerchuk is he keeps those types of people in check. There are numerous examples of bosses who think they're all about Gary's message, complain about their employees, and then he flips the script on them. I'm like crazy about this. I'm super, super driven. I know everybody can be amazing and successful and they just want to pay their bills. So I'm dealing with your, 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 your employees. Yeah. Your job as somebody that sits at the top of something is to put players in the best position to succeed. Once you've done that, you've got to allow them to do their thing. You're a capitalist mm -hmm. trying to deploy almost socialist, communist ideology. You can't control everything. Like, there's nothing wrong with paying your, what, what, what's wrong with paying your bills? They're capable of so much more. Says who? You don't know them. He really is about accountability and he makes sure his followers really understand his message. Do you think Gary Vee's message today, especially in a global pandemic, is still relevant? I think in a global pandemic, that the world has been exposed, especially here in America. I think what's been exposed is that there's no such thing as job security. Our economic systems were not built for everybody to thrive and to succeed. I think we have to look at things like side hustling, entrepreneurship, um, making money online. And so do I think Gary Vee's message is relevant today? Yes but I think he's also become more sophisticated in the delivery of that message. And I think with him doing one-on-one -on -one talks with people without the bravado, without the style, and really listening to them and then telling them what he thinks could make a difference in their life because they haven't figured out what that one thing they could do today that they can control that would make their life better. They haven't figured out what that is. But I think anyone who can figure out what would make their life better has a moral obligation to themselves to do that which would make their life better. And I think that doing that is probably better than watching Netflix or Xbox, regardless of how much people tell you to relax. I don't think you can relax when you know that all the safety and security that you tied into your job was a lie and that it's been exposed by our current crisis. Parts of Gary's message certainly embody the worst attributes of hustle culture, but a lot of that is due to him catering his content in a way that's digestible depending on the platform. By doing so, he creates more viral content, but he loses a lot of important context in the process. A one minute video is perfect for Instagram, but it creates a message that isn't so good when it hits the wrong person it's not intended for. So what's the solution then? Should Gary just post the full documentation of his talks so that new viewers get content? Next? No, that'd be great in theory, but we know the virality of it would be minimal because people don't want to hear the nitty gritty. Perhaps the answer is, again, self-accountability. As the consumers of this content, it's up to us to get context and to be smarter. By doing that, we prevent ourselves from getting scammed by something too good to be true, and we get a full understanding of who someone really is. Over the years, I've unfortunately grown such a distaste for hustle culture, but I am still a fan of Gary Vaynerchuk and other individuals who are honestly just trying to teach their viewers about how to make money online in very specific ways. Um, and I think the one thing I learned about this over the years is that you're never going to agree with someone 100%. So the best thing you can do is take the stuff that you like and learn from that and you can just ignore all the other stuff that you don't like. That's the end of the video. I will see you guys next time. Stay psyched.